This is one of the most fundamental, maybe the fundamental, plot in cosmochemistry and meteoritics. So on the y-axis there is the composition of the elements in the solar photosphere versus the composition of the elements in CI chondrites. And I will now, now show why this is so important. So first we need to really understand this plot. Therefore again on the y-axis there is the composition of the solar photosphere. And on the x-axis there is the composition of CI chondrites. Now the elements are normalized here to 10 to 6 silicon atoms. It doesn't matter what element is chosen here. So it could also be magnesium or aluminum, it could even be dysposium, it doesn't really matter. It also doesn't matter whether it's 10 to 6, it could also be 10 to 4 or 10 to 2 or 10 to 10. Um, so we just need to select one, which in this case is 10 to 6 silicon. Also it's important to realize that these are atoms, so it's not weight or so, which means all the elements are divided by their their weight by their mass basically. So this is something like a molar um, composition. Okay, so this means on the x-axis there's a point with 10 to 6 silicon atoms, or 10 to 6, and on the y-axis there's also 10 to 6. And the crossover, so this is the composition of the sun and this is the composition of the icon rights and the crossover is silicon. Now iron and magnesium have very similar compositions than silicon in the icon rights, but also in, in the photosphere. So they plot somewhere around here. Now the axes are log logarithmic axes, which means this here is something like 10 to 7, 10 to 8, and so on. And the same to the other side, 10 to 5, 10 to 4, and so on. And the same on the y-axis, there's also 10 to 7, 10 to 8, 10 to 5, 10 to 4, and so on. Now the rare earth elements, for example, they have about a, um, they're always given in ppm, which means they have about 4 to 6 orders of magnitude, lower concentrations than silicon, for example, the main elements, which means they plot somewhere around 10 to 2. And again, the composition in the icon rights of the rare earth elements is somewhere around here, but also in the solar photosphere it's somewhere around here, so also around 10 to 2, which means they plot somewhere around here. All the other elements also always have the same composition in the icon rights as in the solar photosphere when normalized to silicon which is the case here, which means they all plot um, somewhere in between rare earth elements and silicon. So if there's an element that has 10 to 5 in chondrites, it also has, they also have 10 to 5 in the solar photosphere. Or 10 to 4 in chondrites, they have 10 to 4 in the solar photosphere. Which means they all plot on this line, which has a slope of one as a result. Now there are a couple of notable exceptions. For example, the Sun contains a lot of helium and a lot of hydrogen. So helium and hydrogen are very high, maybe somewhere up here. But at the same time, these are low in, in, in chondrites, maybe something around here. It's different for hydrogen helium, which means hydrogen helium have very high um, solar abundances, very low. See high abundances, so they plot somewhere around here. And other elements like carbon and nitrogen and also um, some inert gases also plot somewhere up here. And there's one exception and this is lithium because lithium is burned in the sun. So presumably, presumably lithium initially plotted on this line as well. So same composition in CI chondrites as in the sun. But now um, the sun lost some of the lithium because it's consumed 
during fusion, which means the lithium abundance in the sun goes down, which means it goes down here in this direction. So lithium today is maybe somewhere here, so below the line. So let's compare this to um, let's compare this to what we have here. And this is pretty much the same now as it should be. So this is how this plot is constructed and how it works. On the axis, again, see icon rights versus the solar composition, and then there's a slope. One line on which all the elements plot, except for typical elements in the sun and these kind of volatile elements. And lithium is down here below the line because of the it's consumed in uh, in the sun. And there are a number of other interesting uh, points here. One is if we look at other chondrites, because I said, so this is how it looks in the eye chondrites, but what about other chondrites? And this is interesting because it's basically, it looks basically the same in each chondrite. So this is the eye chondrites again, what uh, we just saw, and here is the slope 1 line on which most of the elements plot, except for carbon and uh, nitrogen and carbon up here. But in CM chondrites, it looks basically the same. There's also a slope 1 line, also in CV chondrites, in CO chondrites. And also, if you look at um, ordinary chondrites or N-satide chondrites or K and R chondrites, it's always a slope 1. And the reason for this, of course, is because this is a double logarithmic plot. If you want to see differences between CI, CM, and CV chondrites, what we need to do is look in more detail. So, for example, if we take this plot here, and um, then we see the differences among the different metrides. In this case now, the y-axis is normalized to CI, and 10 to 6 magnesium, so it's magnesium in this case, again, doesn't matter. And then the differences become apparent, and the differences are just in the in the percent range, so not in the orders of magnitude range. And then here you can see, that, for example, calcium and aluminum are enriched in, in some of the carbonaceous chondrites, and uh, something like the volatile elements, so maybe the zinc and, and uh, sulfur as well as... Um, sodium and manganese, they are depleted in the carbonaceous chondrites, and so on. But this should be sufficient for this part. Most important was to see that um, in this very, this very important diagram for cosmochemistry, how this works, how this is constructed, and what it means. And what it means is also uh, this is very important, is that uh, what we see from this diagram is that the composition of the solar photosphere, so the composition is similar to meteorites. Now the solar photosphere and the sun, we assume the solar photosphere is identical to the Sun. Now the Sun has more than 99.9 weight percent of the solar system. It contains more than 99.9 weight percent of the solar system. So if you make the, um, the analog or the equation sort of that the solar system, the composition, of the solar system is identical to the sun, is identical to the solar photosphere, and the solar photosphere is identical to meteorites, chondrites, then you of course also have the equation that the solar system, the composition of the solar system, is identical to the composition of meteorites at least of CI chondrites. And this is what is so important 
about this about this plot here that um the CI condors here that now we have something in the laboratory that we can analyze that has the same composition as the solar system so we can by so we can with a very high precision determine the composition of the solar system and this is a conclusion from this plot here and this is why this plot here is so important and most fundamental to metrics.